The next part of our lecture involves acid nomenclature. There's three very simple rules to get fully protonated acid names from their conjugate bases. If the ending of the ion is "-ide", then we call it a hydroic acid. Here are some examples. The fluoride ion, when you monoprotonate it, is named hydrofluoric acid. This is when it's soluble in water. You may have also heard this called hydrogen fluoride. That is when it is in its gas state. Another example is the sulfide ion. We need to diprotonate this to get it to neutral, and its name is hydrosulfuric acid. So if it's an ide, it becomes a hydro, the name, ic acid. Although sometimes annoying things happen like the UR of the sulfur returns back. If the ion has an 8 ending, then it becomes an ic acid. For example, the bromate ion, when you monoprotonate it, becomes bromic acid. The sulfate ion, when we diprotonate it to the neutral species, becomes sulfuric acid. And the phosphate ion, we need to triprotonate and it becomes phosphoric acid. The last example is with an ite ion. Ite ions become us acids. For example, the bromite ion becomes bromus acid when we monoprotonate. The sulfite ion becomes sulfurous acid. And the phosphite ion, when we triprotonate it to the neutral species, is called phosphorus acid. Now there are some prefixes for our ions that are based on group seven center atoms. So don't forget your prefixes. For example, the perchlorate ion keeps the per to become perchloric acid. And the hypochlorite ion keeps the hypo to become hypochlorous acid, but you notice they still obey the convention of eight going to an ic acid and ite going to an us acid. There are a few special acid names. Ammonia, when we protonate it, becomes ammonium ion. Cyanide ion obeys the convention and becomes hydrocyanic acid. This is another one where it's hydrocyanic acid when soluble in water and hydrogen cyanide when in the gas form. I'm sure you're familiar with the hydroxide ion and water and water and the hydronium ion. So here's a few reminders of the common oxoanions. CO32- is carbonate. For group 5, we have nitrate or nitrite. Also for group 5, phosphate or phosphite. And for group 6, we might have sulfate or sulfite. And of course for group 7, which includes chlorine, bromine, or iodine as the central atom, four oxygens is the perchlorate ion, three the chlorate ion, two the chlorite ion, and one hypochlorite ion. So those are the most common ones that you will encounter. Now this can get a little bit confusing. Let me give you an example using neutral acids containing sulfur. If it's based on the sulfide ion, we call it hydrosulfuric acid. If it's based on the sulfite ion, we call it sulfurous acid when fully protonated. And if it's based on the sulfate ion, we call it sulfuric acid when fully protonated. I think the confusing part is hydrosulfuric and sulfuric acid. Hydrosulfuric acid, the top one, is actually kind of a weak acid. Smelly, but weak. Sulfuric acid is very strong, and that's what you encounter in car batteries. So you don't want to get their names confused. Here are your students' questions. Name HBRO. So what I recommend you do is take away the hydrogens, 
So we have this species here. First name this, and then decide on the acid's name. I'll help you with this first example. This is the hypobromite ion. So you just need to change the ite to the proper acid ending. How about this one, HBrO4? And continuing with the bromine theme, how about HBr? How about H2CO3? And HNO2. I ran out of creativity, so D is not the answer. 